what do you do to de-stress and make sure that you don't burn out covering such a heavy topic? Ooh, okay. First, this is a like, learning process, by the way. Yeah, and so also let's process. just like preface this with, like obviously we didn't go through this stuff, so it's like, it's tough and dark to hear these stories and be kind of immersed yeah. in it, but obviously like we're not actually in it, so. Yeah, that's true, although I think I was talking about this with my parents the other day because we were talking about like doctors who have to like diagnose things every single, like it's, so it's one thing to be going through some type of trauma or like very terrible like circumstance and that's a different kind of trauma, but there's also, we learned vicarious trauma, which is like something that I feel like we kind of went through like up and down throughout the year, which is just like constantly being around stories and people who have endured like such heavy trauma that you kind of internalize it and which is not entirely a good thing, but I feel like made us better at our jobs. Yeah, and I think which is not a great thing always, but like, yeah. Yeah, and I think it was really weird for me because when you're producing, you're not really, you're like listening to stuff with a checklist in your mind. Like we need yeah. to get this and get this with any interview. But then I would go back and watch them while we were actually and editing yeah, them yeah, and then yeah. suddenly be like, oh, oh my god, overcome by just how terrible some of the stuff that we were hearing was. So how did you de-stress? Or like, how did you self-care? I feel like a big part of it was talking to my dad who was a prosecuting attorney for a while and he yeah. worked on really horrifying cases of like child abuse and stuff like that. So, mm -hmm. um, so he had kind of also gone through this where your job is making you kind of immersed in this trauma. And he basically told me that like I had to disassociate. He was like, you need to not, um, you need to kind of like put up an emotional wall on purpose and not, it's, he was like, it's okay to not take on all of those feelings, which I think going up until then, yeah. I was like, I owe these people like you're really feeling. feeling what they're telling me. But yeah, yeah, he basically was like, it's okay to not do that. Also like understanding that they don't, people who are going through these things don't want you to internalize their feelings. Like no. they don't want, like, you didn't go through it, so it's not your job to feel the pain that they've gone through, especially when like people are on their own journeys of like healing, um, and knowing like understanding that they're like they're getting better, and that like it's not your job to kind of internalize that. I think it was just very hard for our personalities in general, and because we really wanted to kind of make sure that we weren't. Um, I don't want to say using them for their stories. I, we didn't want them to feel like we were we were re-traumatizing them or that we were um, just kind of taking their story to put it in the series as like a way to tell the like the, the issue um, or expose the issue or understand it. So it was it it was like a really tough thing. I think that every single person on like Kate, me, and Kevin all kind of had bumps throughout where we were just like, we need to take a break and we need to like go get some self. I full like went to a full blown self care retreat um, in California, Napa Valley for like, oh, like 10 days. So I've been in Fremont, California and Napa Valley for the past week with da -da -da -da, Daily. based in California, run by uh, Sam McCannon. And basically I did this self care retreat for like the past week and that, helped me so much and then just like kind of for me spending time with like family and friends and then i started going to therapy throughout this because um well one because i've been wanting to go to therapy but this was like a really great way to kind of push you into doing it because you realize like why am i internalizing these feelings why are certain things very triggering to me and you guys saw that i made a video on like um, sexual violence and things like like how to talk to kids about it and kind of opened up a little bit about certain experiences that I've had so this that was like a really big deal and we've had so like ha I don't even know how many nights in hotels like we were we would just stay up and talk about like our own experiences and why we were feeling a certain way about covering this issue but also why it made it so much more important and that was really helpful like if we had been going through this and not been able to talk to each other because yeah. like I I mean I feel like Adam is like so sick of hearing about the sex <laughs> trade, but like it's good that we are going through it together because like 
the people in your life don't want to hear about this all the time. Unless... Which like we, yeah, we always manage to like make every single conversation with anyone outside of like our work talk about this because yeah. we were like, you need to know. Yeah. <laughs> and that probably wasn't very fair. Um, I think that after this documentary comes out, um, it'll be a great way to have conversations with people um, and we'll be able to like reference our work so that they kind of get like a sliver of an understanding of why we felt this way. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like so, and then managing a healthy work-life balance. Um, I, I definitely think that that's still like a, a learning progress. Yeah, because we're both pretty new to like the working world, like fairly fresh out of school. Yeah. So. Yeah, I think, I mean, I just have to make times where I'm not thinking about work at all. You read a lot too. Yeah, I read a lot of books and then I do these yoga videos that are on YouTube. Yoga <laughs> with? Yoga with Adrienne. Yoga with yeah, Adrian. I love her. Um, <laughs> but she has these videos that are like yoga for stress. We've done that. On trips. Yeah, and we've like done them together. <laughs> They're for emotional well-being. Yeah. So that's kind of what I do. What like, advice would you give to somebody who isn't working in like a specifically trauma, traumatizing type work field or whatever, but is still feeling stress in their job and they just like kind of want to understand how to balance work with life? I feel like what my dad said about putting up a wall is really good. Like it's okay to be like, for me, I'm not gonna think about this right now. Yeah. Like I need to create a barrier. And like putting away your phone and like not checking your emails on the weekends. So, like I constantly have to ask myself, if I don't do this right now, will it still get done? Will everything be okay? Like I don't know why, for some reason, like whenever we would reach out to sources or even now like getting ready to push the series out and pushing it out, I'll like still send emails on the weekend, I'll still do research on the weekend and I'm just like, okay, well this will still get done. Like, and people aren't even gonna respond to this right now, so if they're not gonna respond to it, why am I sending it? Or like, things like that. So I think that you have to manage that. You also have to like, really schedule like time, even if it's like an hour a day or 30 minutes a day, for you to like, unwind and just like, let, like don't let yourself talk about work or think about work and really find like, what's most valuable in terms of who you want to spend time with and how you spend it. And I feel like the past year, because we've had such limited time at home, at least for me, I I like am very particular with who I spend my time with and like what I do in my free time. Yeah. I think one upside is that I think we're working this much and thinking about it this much because we like it. So yeah. And we really care about this issue. Yeah how to deal with work rejection and if you've ever suffered depression from work rejection and how to overcome that. So I have cried one time for like not getting a job and that was a job at CNN <laughs> and it was right out of school and it was pretty much guaranteed and I was like, I like had talked to Soledad O'Brien about it and she was just like, yeah, like you're good to go, this is gonna happen or whatever and then I didn't get it and I was so upset and then I like sat and thought to myself and I was just like, okay, this means something better is coming. And then a week later I got offered like my first reporting job on television. And I was like, that was actually what I wanted. So after that, I like, I was just kind of like, okay, any opportunity that you don't get is because there's a better opportunity out there for you. So like you always just have to have that trust. Also, I really love reading stories about people that like either changed their life really late or like started doing what they're doing really late. So like, have you guys, you've seen that meme that's like JK Rowling didn't yeah. write Harry Potter until this time or like yeah. at 26 Oprah was doing this and it's like, I just feel like those stories give me a lot of, like I feel like I'm just holding myself up to a higher standard, which is good, but yeah. you know. But also, okay, so have you seen that? There's like this tweet where this girl like basically writes out, she's talking about, I mean her storytelling is way better. She's talking about like how when you're cooking, you have to do certain things at a certain time so that you can get the final product. And if you were to dump everything in the pot at one time, it's gonna be terrible. Yeah. And so like, if you compare yourself to other people and you try to squeeze in all of those things at once, like the final product won't be great. But if you take your time and like, let like the butter like sizzle with like the onion and like <laughs> you like take, like let things take its natural course, everything will work out in the end and you'll have a great meal or job opportunity. So yeah. yeah. Hey friends, thank you so much for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please don't forget to give it a thumbs up, comment, and of course subscribe. And don't forget to hit me up on Snapchat, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. See you guys.
on the next one.